Welcome to our sixth installment of Cracking Open the Podcast, brought to you by the Sage Circle. In this series, I interview Sage Circle members to find out about their intuitive development. Today's guest is Teresa, a Sage Circle member on her intuitive journey. Teresa shares with us her recent steps onto her spiritual path, a block that was in her way as a child, and her advice for going within. Let's jump into Cracking Open. Welcome back to another episode of Cracking Open the Podcast. I'm super excited to introduce to you one of our more active members, Teresa. You've been with the circle for a long time. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I have been uh, in the public group, the open group for a while. Um, I just joined Sage in, uh, I want to say, September. Yeah. The, the inner circle. Yeah. When I saw yeah, your name come through, I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> when I got the email, I was like, oh my God, there's probably like a million people. She's not going to pick me. And then like you answered like the next day, I was like, really? <laughs> I'm like, I know that name. I know that name. Well, let's jump in with my favorite question. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about when you were first aware of your intuition, how did it open and develop for you? Well, I'd have to say I'm probably one of your more backwards um students um it was like when I was younger I always just kind of marveled at like feeling things around me like just in the trees and the clouds I was always like a nature girl like a little disclaimer though my my uh, my, husband, my father is an alcoholic so he was like not ver not um physically abusive but verbally and just had that kind of whole like gloom in the air when he was around so I learned at a very young age that children should be not seen and not heard you know, um, so I kind of went within when he was around and I never really remember having any, you know, imaginary friends or anything like that. But I just remember like anytime we were out and he was around, I would just kind of like lose myself in the trees and the clouds and stuff. But yeah. later on, when I was a teenager, I, my guides, my poor guides, I am the most stubborn person. <laughs> like I'm always like, Damn it, I knew that. Why didn't I? Why? 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 Why didn't I listen to myself? But I never recognized it as intuition. I, I it wasn't until recently, I'm in my mid forties and it wasn't until recently that I'm like, wow, this is, this is like a thing that I could kind of listen to and rely on maybe a little bit, possibly. Let me try it. But as, as recent as October, something happened that I was kicking myself. I'm like, dude, what would Bo say? Like, I just did that. Why did I just do that? <laughs> so you started to open up more like just this last fall then? Yeah. I didn't grow up with any type of religion or anything like that. So I was kind of always like, as I got into like my twenties, I started to get interested in it, but I couldn't find anything that fit. Like I'm an atheist. I don't, I didn't, well, I, I think I'm an atheist. I was, I don't even know if that fits anymore, but you know, you try different groups and different things and you're just like, you have to speak to something other. And for me, there was no something other. I couldn't, I, I couldn't make that connection, even mother nature. I mean, I know energy exists in nature. I just couldn't connect with it to form any type of a connection like that, you know? And then you're crossing over course, my gosh. Like I knew from a very young age, I don't know how I knew, I just had the feeling that when people cross over, they have that like review process. I didn't think of it in that way. But when I heard you explain it that way in the course, I was like, wow, <laughs> like I knew that. How did I know that, you know? So that, that kind of just bridged the gap for me. So now I feel like I can speak open and freely and not have to have any scripted, like rhyming poetry uh, offerings and things like that with, you know, on the full moon with the purple candle going and everything. Like I can just speak to my guides whenever and it's just so much more natural and I don't even have to speak out loud. Like I can just, they just know, they just hear me and it's just so comforting. It's completely, I mean, the last couple of months in your program has just changed my life. This podcast is brought to you by The Sage Method, the most comprehensive and down-to-earth intuitive development training available. Is this your year? Is it finally your time to increase your intuition, bring in more abundance, and experience the bliss you deserve? If yes, then join thousands of students across the world for a seven-week journey to uncover your natural, beautiful, and strong intuition. Visit us at thesagemethod.com for more information. So you've always had those moments. It's the after the moments that you're like, oh, I, sh I had yeah. it. And I didn't. Yeah, I'm always, I'm always backing in the door backwards. 
<laughs> okay, that's serious. That's really relatable. That is really relatable. <laughs> like I surprised myself. I did it again. How did I do that? I should have known. <laughs> and you I also, know. I am also hearing that the there's a removal of complication. So yeah. letting it just be more organic. Yes. Yeah. It, it, I'm just learning to just go with it. You know, like don't stress the small stuff and it's all small stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, the human stuff, like, yeah, you have to pay your bills or you're going to lose your house or, you know, whatever. But I'm just on autopilot with that. But just like everyday stuff, like drama with friends and people, like I'm not even on social media that much anymore. I take pictures to share my house or, you know, I'll go to your groups and stuff like that. There's just a couple groups I pop in and out of, but I don't get into conversations with people. I, I'm just so at peace with myself. That is a really big reward for the work. So yeah, tell me, was. was there any significant intuitive moments that have hit you recently then? Oh, well, I can tell you the funny one, another stubborn oh. one. Yes. <laughs> I, I want to hear them both. <laughs> we moved from one state to another. We, we, uh, we closed on a house September 4th. Um, and a couple weeks later, we, we moved in. So I took a leave from work. I had a I had a good two and a half months off, but during that time, my, my vehicle that I had just was giving me ridiculous problems. And the state that I was in, I was able to pass inspection. The state that I moved to, I wasn't able to because it, just the way the, the um, emissions and whatnot is tested. So my husband's like, just get a new one, just, just trade it in, just get a new one, you know? And I, he's like, get a lease. It'll be cheaper. They had a sale, whatever on the leases. And I wasn't really crazy about the idea of a lease because even though we don't go anywhere now because of COVID, I just didn't like the idea of the restriction. But I was like, whatever, you know what? I just, I need a vehicle. I still have to go back and forth sometimes. So I did everything that I could online through the dealership and stuff like that. And then when I get to the dealership to actually make the, trans to actually do the transaction, the bank wouldn't approve me because they saw me as unemployed because I was on a leave. And if I tell you for the three months leading up to the day that I, not three months, sorry, the three days, leading up to going to the dealership. I was fighting with my HR department like you would not believe. Like supervisor after supervisor because I couldn't log in because I was on leave so my login was locked. So I couldn't get my pay stubs that I needed to get the leave. Finally, after fighting with them, I get the pay stubs and I submit them and the bank says, you're not employed, this pay stub is two months old. And I was like, forget it, forget it. Like I wasn't even happy about the vehicle I was getting, I was just doing it to do it. You know, yep. but it was, I had, a, I had a Jeep Wrangler and I always said, if I got another Jeep, I would be an orange one. It's my favorite color. That's what I originally wanted, you know, and this one I was going to lease was gray and it was just, uh, you know, <laughs> I got home, I got in my old beat up Jeep. I'm lucky it started and I got home and I was so frustrated. And a week later, the orange Jeep shows up in my email for sale. I told my husband, it was, it was like right near where he works. It was a good hour and a half from my house. I was like, I'll meet you there. You have to buy it for me because I'm still unemployed. And he's like, but, 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 but we just bought the house. But I don't care. I need a vehicle. This is my vehicle. You're buying it for me. And that's it. And it was so smooth. And that is when I just turned around. I was like, why did I just stress myself out for three days trying to make this happen? Mm -hmm. Like, that's why I said my poor guides, like I am the most stubborn person. <laughs> came, and the roadblocks came and they came. And it yes, was like, okay, I, I, I'm still fine. I want to do it. Yeah. And I'm just pushing like a bulldozer right up against the wall, trying to push them out of my way. I love that. <laughs> Afterwards, and I realized it and it really, really dawned on me like, this is what she's talking about. This is what Paul's talking about. Like what, they had to drop a house on my head. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes picture it. I sometimes picture my guys because I'm stubborn too. So you and me, I, I totally get it there. And I sometimes picture them like I'm a kid and I'm going to the left because I'm, you know, hell bent to go that way. And it's like, they put their hand on top of my head to try to hold me. And I'm like, let me go, let me go, let me go, let me go. And then they finally just turn me the other way to get what I actually want. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And yes. you, knew, you knew you didn't want a dull gray Jeep. Yeah. It's, it's just, I wish I could just get over that, that, piece that hump and just make that breakthrough and just be like stop it and listen <laughs> listen ahead of time life will be so much easier I know this why can't I live this <laughs> you know, it's really cool though is that you know it that's mm -hmm. like 90 percent of the battle 
is that you know it. Yeah. When you're in the moment though, it's still like trying to catch that you're in the moment and recognize it for what it is and be like, all right, they're trying to tell me something. Let me just back off of this. Mm-hmm. You know? That's an awesome practice. Yeah, definitely practice <laughs> in the work. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about how your intuition flows. I, I feel like I just kind of, uh, I get the Claire's mixed up, so I'm not even going to try. I just <laughs> feel like I kind of just know things, you know, mm-hmm. but I feel, and I don't, I can't really even think of any examples only because like the stuff that I feel like I just know, I don't really know what to do with it. Like, it's not anything earth shattering. It's not, you know, but then like, I get these visions of like things, something happening to my husband or my son. And then, um, you know, like, like I'll get the, the typical, like, somebody's name will just pop into my head and then like two days later they call me out of the blue like that kind of thing so I'm like well if that happens then why is this popping into my head like something's gonna happen to somebody that I love you know and then it kind of like puts me in panic mode and I'm like well is is that real or am I just imagining it is it is it is you know and then like I'm almost I think that's what holds me back because I'm almost afraid of it like to figure out what's real and what's not real or what's intuition and what's just fear of, of life and the circumstances that would follow events like that. Um, but it's not like I see anything particularly happening to them. Like I don't get visions or anything, you know? So I'm, I'm again, your course is really just kind of like, all right, well, that's, that's probably more just because there's a lot on the line right now and I can't do this alone and we're getting older and the stability issues is there, you know? Um, but I, I don't, uh, I don't get anything intuitively earth shattering, really. I, I haven't worked on that yet <laughs> well, <laughs> to try to like ask for help. Right. But what you do have is you have clearly this internal guidance system that mm-hmm. uh, alerts you and wakes you. And so it, do you feel like it could be a connection of a combination of your intuition alerting you to think about this, your husband, for example, or connect with him on something, but then that human fear kind of gets muddied into it as well. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. And I mean, I just lost my mom recently, um, just in August of 2019. Um, So I think I'm kind of hoping that it's her all the time. You know, like I, I find myself not speaking to my guides, but speaking to my mom, like, mom, I know you're here and not like, Hey, I know you guys are here, you know? Um, so I, I think I'm, I'm still kind of, I still feel like I got the doors closed on the side. Like the mind is not completely open yet to everything. And I can feel that I'm blocked. I can feel that I'm not letting certain things in and I'm not opening up to the possibilities of everything. So, you know, like even with my husband, he's like my best friend. And up until this point, I pretty much share everything with him. And now this stuff, I touch on it a little bit with him and he's just like, okay. You know, <laughs> I think I kind of lost him a little bit with this stuff, but you know, cause he's not really sure how he feels about death and the afterlife and you know, in, intuitive stuff, like he's fine with, you know, he trusts my instincts, I think sometimes more than I do. Cause I'll say, I just got this feeling that this, this and that, and he's just like, okay, you know, and I'm just over here like, eh. <laughs> that is so common. There's so many people who are in significant relationships and one person starts to explore their intuition and open up and the other person might not be doing it at the same time. And then there's a little bit of a balance, but it tends to open the door in a relationship to deeper communication. Like you said, you tell him everything, Mm -hmm. but having that difference and that you're bringing it in and he's not tends to open the door to more significant conversations, more in-depth, meaningful things. Right. Yeah. I just have to approach it lightly with him little by little. (laughs) <laughs> he doesn't think that I'm he doesn't think I'm losing my mind sitting home all day by myself. <laughs> like I'm literally home like 12 hours a day by myself with my cats and my dog you know he's probably gonna think I'm just losing it a little bit <laughs> <laughs> so you're literally right now in the process of opening up you've got awareness you're paying attention Uh, Do you find now it's a more frequent experience of having this gut knowing? I think it's more of a frequent relaxation waiting for it. Like I'm not getting, because I'm not getting any 
any real like intuitive hits on anything big, but I think just the fact that I relaxed into finally coming to terms for myself anyway, that, that I believe in this and this is real and that something can and will happen eventually and just kind of um, keeping myself on track with the practice with the GCP and uh, I mean, honestly, we're still settling into the house and I'm just getting back into the groove of working and everything and keeping, you know, my house is like three times what I had before the size, so the cleaning and everything. But I make sure in the morning, in the wee hours in the morning, I at least do my GCP and one of the discovery meditations because that's like the magical morning time. If I don't do that in the morning, I can't do it after work. I'm too wound up. So I think just even though I'm not getting anything yet, there's no like real communication about anything specifically. I just feel more relaxed and open to it. So I know it's coming. And I know that there's, like I said, I feel, I feel like there's like doors in my brain that are closed that I'm trying too hard to open them. Like well, that's, that's the analogy that I get. That's a good analogy. Cause that that's very relatable. Tell me with GCP and for the listeners, that's ground clear protect. Have you seen any positive results from that in your human life? Yes, I'm a um, customer service representative for a utility company in a major, like a like a major city, and I do online chat. So they don't they don't usually contact us to say thank you for, <laughs> you know, thank you for my lights. So it's always problems, always issues, it's billing issues. I mean, COVID brought along a whole slew of problems that that people don't even realize. You know, it just trickles down. It's it's just all over. So we've, we're hitting our own issues with that as well, as far as billing and billing adjustments and people out of work and they can't pay and they're afraid that they're going to have their stuff turned off. So it just really, really got to me like back in March, April, when we first started working from home and all of this coming out of the woodwork and people were so scared. Um, we really felt like therapists, you know, and, and I could feel like almost like an empathic kind of thing coming through the phone or coming through the computer from from these people like I can almost visualize them sitting in their home what they're wearing the panic that they're feeling everything just comes through and it's just so overwhelming now with the GCP I'm just kind of like and it might sound cold but only people that are going through this really would understand I'm able to separate myself really like okay I'm sitting here as the customer service representative now and this is not it's it's almost like in your book which I'm like two-thirds of the way through where like you separate yourself mm -hmm. you know when you started talking about like you stood back and watched yourself do the reading to get through the hard parts that's almost like what it feels like it's all right I'm separating myself so that this part of me can go over there and work and deal with these people and and not get too involved and sucked into their misery and and you know so I think that GCP has definitely helped with, with that. That is a huge uh, success story for GCP. That is a perfect example. It's a huge success story for my mental health. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. And here's this, here's this tool that takes a minute to mm -hmm. do, you know, in your, in your beautiful morning time, it takes a minute to do, and you get to now go through your job and then leave your, and, and be done at the end of the day, not carrying all that mm -hmm. heaviness right and I don't even have GCP down pat because every time you know it takes me it takes me a good like 10-15 minutes because I'm like I still haven't settled into something that feels exactly comfortable yet that I can just jump into it and do it and, and yep. be done with it in like a minute you know like I watch you do it before the card readings and I'm like that's it <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I've been doing it for like 15 years but yeah <laughs> yeah it's still worth it. And it's, it, that's, that's just an incredible, that's an incredible story. Cause that's, if anyone's listening that deals with customer service or has heaviness at work, just one moment in your morning of 10, 15 minutes of a practice like GCP, I mean, it's a game changer. Yeah. And I'm not a very regimented person. I mean, I, I call myself, and it's that vicious cycle, you know, you're a procrastinator. I put too much on my plate. I want to learn this. I want to learn that. I want to do this class and that class. That, that's another intuitive thing that came to me because I got your email about the Sage, uh, the seven week, you know, program. And I'm just like, nope, I'm not doing it. I'm not, 
I don't care if I got to pay for it, if it's free, I can't tell you how many things I joined and how many pamphlets and pages and everything I printed out and they're stuck in a book somewhere. And I'm just like, I'm not doing it again. Like, why do I keep doing this? And then I don't do it. And then I feel guilty. And then, you know, there goes my self-esteem because I'm a procrastinator and you can't get anything done and you can't stick to a routine and I don't know. But your email just kept coming to me. Like it just kept like, just one more, just one more, just try, just try. And like I said, between COVID and the move and everything, I haven't given it my full attention, but I know it's there. And and the 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 crossing over in the GCP, I'm I'm, I'm I'll definitely go back to it. I'm gonna because the shadow work and all that, I know it's gonna probably gonna help with those closed doors in my head. But j- just knowing that it's there and having the community and everything that you offer, it's it's just awesome like I found my place like if there was a sage circle community center I would be there like every day (laughs) you and me both (laughs) you and me both so yeah the sage method course seven week course but the sage circle is the online spiritual community so what parts of that do you use the most or that resonate with you or that are the most helpful for you oh I love the card readings I, I just, I love them. I was, I was card number three last time. So discovery meditations help a lot because it keeps, keeps the brain busy, you know, the left brain, right brain thing that does help. Yes, definitely. And then the, just the community, I like just being in the group and just, you know, I don't, I don't comment or like everything, but every once in a while, somebody's story or question or whatever will pop out and I'll just try to, you know, help where I can or that too. It just like, just comes to me like, she needs to hear this and I'll just say it. <laughs> Usually, usually 99.9% good, you know, results. So. so I'm kind of chuckling a little bit inside because this is like, well, I don't get a lot yet. I don't get a lot yet. But if you listen to <laughs> what you, I'm say. you are getting a lot, <laughs> you'll see something in the community and it's like instantly, you know, like what needs to be or like they need to hear this or they you are getting a lot so <laughs> I would encourage you to give yourself a little bit more credit for what the intuitive messages that do come through you know what it is I think it's not coming through the way I want it to come through or the way I expected it to come through you know like I I want to be able to hear my guides I want to be able to you know so I think you have that expectation so you overlook the small things it's it's like oh, that, that's that all right you know I'll put that in the book but that doesn't mean anything <laughs> like, I want the big stuff to come through <laughs> you're not alone with that it by acknowledging the little ones mm-hmm. and saying oh this happened this happened the little ones get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger so what would be one piece of advice that you would give other people walking their spiritual path Oh, I would, I would definitely say to go within, like, there's not a book out there and no disrespect to you. You're, you're everything that you offer helps people to go along their path and and gives direction. Um, But ultimately it's, it's all inside. There's no, there's no book. There's no Bible. There's no direction. You know, it's, if, if you feel like you need to tiptoe around in in the middle of a snowstorm and three o'clock in the morning for whatever reason go do it because there's something waiting there for you there's a message in it for you and you know anybody you ask should I do this is it okay to do this of course you're gonna get no but the craziest wackiest thing that you could think of that feels right it's it's right for you just just go with it Mm -hmm. oh and there's no no disrespect taken at all because all of it is based on telling people to go within (laughs) <laughs> right that's true yeah. yeah and that's what I like about your course is because you there's no specific like you should do it this way and you should do it that way and there's a million different you know whatever whatever 101 books you know and there's a million psychics out there that want to train you to become a psychic and they tell you how to do it and there is no how to do it because everybody's different and everybody's unique and original and everybody has their own path that they need to experience and when somebody does it the way that it works for them which they'll find out by going within. Mm-hmm. That's when it opens up for them. Yeah, I mean, definitely explore and look around and, and you know get ideas on different ways, different things to try to see what works for you. But never, ever, ever do something that doesn't feel right because somebody's telling you it's the way to do it. Exactly. That is absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much, Teresa. And thank you for coming on here with me today. 
Thank you for having me. I was so excited to talk to you and, and, and share. And I listened to the other two podcasts y'all stated so far. I love them. I can't wait to hear more. Thanks, Teresa. Thank you so much. You're welcome.